Amen. I want to invite her husband up and uh, he could come on and introduce her. Benny. And I uh, can Praise the Lord. Let's celebrate the Lord and thank God. Amen. And you talk about your prize. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Pastor, where are you at? The Dread Champions yeah. are the men's meetings. Yes. Don't miss the next one. <laughs> Any Dread Champions in here? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very good. We're uh, fixing to put something online here. I've been uh, typing away, putting everybody's email address in there. Just taking just a little time. I'm up to two, maybe three fingers now, so <laughs> just bear with me. I'd just like to introduce you to the love of my life. Someone that uh, I can always turn to when Jesus isn't there, she is. And that's just like looking in a mirror anyway. You know, someone asked me recently what she reminded me of. How I many of you know who Monk is? The little comedy. Okay, this is Mrs. Monk. Don't do that! Can't do that! Okay. But we just want to thank you. I bet. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, he, um, thank you so much for coming. I know people go, wow, you know, this is not a huge crowd, but you know what? Jesus is here. <laughs> and he wanted me here, so he has something special to say to everyone here. And uh, uh, in the beginning, we used to, I used to go to people's, like, a trailer, if you know what a trailer is. That's not something you put behind your car or your horse or something. Uh, you, they call the manufactured homes here in Florida. We have millions of them. Uh, every time there's a blizzard up north, we have people move down here. They don't even want to wait for their house to be built. They'll move into one of those for a while, and then they get home. And so we can tell when there's really bad weather up there because we get a lot more people here in Florida. <laughs> but uh, I used to go to the, uh, the trailer parks. You know, that's where the people would set up their living. And uh, they had some pretty strange people in some of those that we went to, but we loved them for Jesus anyway. And uh, they, we had powerful times there. And then the neighbors would find out while we were there, they would just keep cramming in those trailers. I think they could hold maybe 12 people, but we'd end up with like 30 or 40. And they were hungry. And they were hearing something they never heard before. And they certainly wanted to come and find out who that pink haired person was. <laughs> and so I, I enjoyed those days. I do a lot of international traveling now and I go all over the world, but I love where I live. And I love Florida. And God calls it his battle station on earth. So, and the reason we have so many of the hosts of heaven here is that is what it's known as in heaven, his battle station. And there's gonna be a lot of fierceness put out by the believers who live here against the darkness until they run, their plans get crushed, and one day, this whole state will be a region of light yeah. and glory to God. So I'm working towards that all the time. There will be regions of glory and light all over the earth, but I can assure you this is going to be one of them, and anyone who lives in Florida or ministers in Florida will not escape carrying the glory. Amen? I was recently in, um, I think it was Missouri speaking, and for the first time, God actually is, you can sit down, I'll forget you're standing up. <laughs> I'm going to just share a little bit before I share. Is that okay? <laughs> this is my introduction. Usually they last two hours, but I'm going to trim it down. So I do have some brand new revelation, and this will be the first place I share that brand new revelation. And uh, so we want to welcome everybody. Is, are they watching online right now, John? Hi! Everybody yell, hello, Facebook! Hi. To me, that's not just a little camera. That is the world. I look at that thing as the world listening, amen? 
if I can remember what I was going to say, I'll be doing not not the revelation is what I, what else I was going to say. But uh, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. He is my best friend. He better be your best friend. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I want you. That's my best friend. And he will get in your face all the time. <laughs> Remind you of things all the time. Find things that are lost all the time. He even tells me what color looks best on me. He goes shopping with me. People think, Holy Spirit, you know, yes, he is the spirit of holiness. And, and he is holy. But he will so get involved in your life. That's why Jesus knew the best thing he could do when he left was to send him. And I know we always hear about the, the power of the Holy Spirit, the movement of the Holy Spirit, but you better learn about the fun of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because he does like to have fun. They call him the drama king in heaven. He makes all the drama happen in heaven and a lot of drama on this earth. He's about to touch everyone on this earth without their permission. Amen? Yeah. So I think he's one of the most excited beings anywhere in existence right now. He knows what's going to happen. He already knows what the future is. And uh, no one is afraid in heaven. I assure you. There is no fear there. So we should have, say, no fear. We should have no fear in our lives. And so he does, he, he gets in my face all the time. He's talking to me when I fall asleep. He's talking to me when I wake up. And, uh, and he is a very good friend of mine, amen? And he does like the pink hair, so watch out if you don't like it. <laughs> my friend won't be happy if you don't like this pink hair. This was heaven's idea. I totally did not expect it. You know, when you get called by God, uh, don't try to figure it all out in your head because it's probably not going to be the way you thought it would. But it will be amazing, life-impacting, not just for you, but around the world. And God's about to put some unknown people out in the front of everyone else so that they can manifest and demonstrate for Him. And that is recently what He's been doing with me in several different ways. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the manifested sons and daughters who are doing great signs and wonders, who would display the very image, power, and operations of the living God in ways that will shock people and stun hell. It is already happening, amen? And so well, one thing I did was walk on air. I didn't walk on water yet, but I did walk on air. And Jen was right behind me when it happened. I think she's still trying to recover from it. <laughs> and I just tell everyone here, get ready. Because it will usually happen when you least expect it. But I have been declaring something. And I'm going to encourage you, don't stop declaring the things of God that you read in the Word and you say, I want to do that for you. Yes. If you start saying that, you're going to start seeing those things happen. And I had, I had recently fallen, not really bad, you know, I mean, I fell, stubbed my toe, and then I, um, there's something new I'm going to teach you here tonight, how to take yourself back a few minutes when something happens and it will be like it never happened to you. Say, we, we as the body of Christ, body of Christ are over time. over time. We're not under time. Not under time. We're over time. And the way that manifests is uh, sometimes you can take yourself back just a few minutes. If you've been injured, this has been happening over and over. You can believe it, refuse it. I would say use it. We need to use whatever God gives us, right? Jesus Christ in time himself would go back in time, forward in time. He would accelerate where he was going. Uh, and people wouldn't see him in the spirit realm. This is all about the spirit realm I'm talking about. Okay, we were meant to rule in that place. You are right now, every one of you, if you're a believer, you are already seated in heaven. The Bible says so. And I even know how that happens. Some of you probably heard me talk about that, but I'm going to talk about some new things in a few minutes. But I'm going to let you know that the things that he has had me talking about for 10 years is happening. It is, I haven't risen someone, I haven't raised someone from the dead that was cremated, but just wait for it. 
I certainly plan to do that. You need to say, I plan it too. Uh, you know the, the Bible scripture that says you have not because you ask not? When you say I receive that, that means you're saying yes. Say I say yes to what God has for me. And I do that all the time to him. But I recently have been talking to him about the scripture that says that you now he's setting his angels to to watch over us and to take care of us in all our ways, and that we shall not even stub our toe on the rock. Remember that one? I kept saying that over and over and over, that I will not fall, I will not ever fall again, I will not stub my foot, I will not stub anything. And I was saying it, I was just saying it, I was like, I will not ever fall again. I will not hurt myself, hit myself, I will hit nothing. I will never do it again. Now, when I say you need to say it, that's how you say it. The Bible says, be violent. Be passionately spiritual violence. They, they take it by force, amen? And so you just saw spiritual violence coming out of me. That was not violence against a person. I was declaring the word of God with a sin, and I meant it. The week after that happened, I was in Reno, Nevada. Miracles can happen anywhere. <laughs> and I walked off of a step that probably wasn't quite this high, but almost this high. And we were going towards the green room. I was going to speak. And Jen was behind me. And I was, of course, talking. <laughs> talking to the pastor who was walking in front of me. And I didn't even realize what I had done. But I mean, if I had known or had normally what would happen, if you stepped off of something like that high, you would fall on your face, wouldn't you? I mean, you'd be pretty well beat up. But I had been declaring that, and I meant it. I meant it, that I would not ever fall again. And so when I stepped off in midair, because I didn't even realize that stuff was there, Jim was on me. She didn't step off in here. She was too busy getting uh, undone. Uh, and I just kept walking. And I was just talking to him. I did not realize that I was elevated up high. I probably about this high. And so I just kept walking and talking to the pastor. And she said, what are you doing? And I went, what was it? You know, I was still talking to the pastor. She goes, you are floating in air. And I was like, I was, I was like, what? walking and I could not tell that I was not walking on the floor at first but once my, my natural mind kicked in and I kind of realized um, what am I doing up here I actually dropped my iPad and I went ah <laughs> and I was still in the air I, I didn't, still didn't fall or anything and the pastor was just walking in front of me answering what I had said to him and, and all of a sudden Jen just goes you are walking in the air. And then I looked down. <laughs> and I was about this high up, just walking on nothing. Let me tell you, it was weird. <laughs> as much as you say these things, it's the most powerfully impacting thing to you when you see the words you declare with the power of the Holy Spirit and you passionately mean it. You know what he says? If you mean it and don't doubt in your heart, remember that part? Well, I was doubting in my heart. Even when I was standing in the air, I was like so excited. And, and I'm like, wow. And in my mind, I'm thinking, wow, this is, this is crazy. This is awesome. And then the pastor was turning around just then. He goes, what's going on? Because we're making a bunch of noise. As he's turning around, all of a sudden, I just floated right back down to the floor. And then I began shaking because I was so undone. The presence of God that was on me that created that. Okay, now you know I didn't create that myself. But what I had declared and decreed, he established it to me. And because of that, his presence was so strong, right where we had Jen and I both, we were shaking like this. You know, realizing that we just had a supernatural wonder happen. And uh, I asked, I was asking the Father at that time, I'm saying, what was that? Was that like, was that a work? Was that one of the works of Christ? And the Father said, no, that was a greater work. 
And that was a greater work. And you know, he said, because my son, he walked on the water, but he felt the water. You walked on the air, you felt nothing. You were walking on nothing. That is a greater work, and you better get used to it. <laughs> like, we sat in the green room for a while, because I was supposed to be out there speaking, and finally we went up and I was still like, shaking, and we told the people, they got real excited, and said, everybody stand up. Everybody stand up, stand up. Everybody in here, stand up. This is something that is possible for every believer in here. You have to understand that Christ meant what he said. The works that I did, you will do also. But greater works you will do. Everybody shout, I take, I take the greater works, the greater works and, the works. and the works. I want them all. I want them all. So I passionately declare. Of the living God. Christ gave me this right. And I'm taking it. Amen. Let it be. And, and I know a few months before that, um, Jesus had said, I'm going to let you start manifesting because I do ask for that all the time. One of our purposes, if you're alive and breathing right now, and apparently you are, then you were chosen for this time. The time of the manifested sons and daughters. And it talks about in Romans that the very earth is in travail. That's why it's shaking and, you know, shaking and all kinds of things going on in the earth is shaking and quaking because it wants us to stand up and demonstrate who God is. Um, God apparently and clearly gave us dominion. Say dominion. dominion. And control, control. And authority, authority. Over this earth. It's time we started taking it. It's just like the weather. We're over the weather, not under the weather. How many people believe that? Let me see your hands. We were created to be over the weather. Uh, Christ very much was over the weather. Uh, he controlled the storms. He stopped the storms. He would go uh, through time and accelerate, even through the very atmosphere that he was walking in or on the boat that he stepped in. It said he stepped in the boat and then he was there. How many people know that does not mean he traveled literally through the water? Not just him, but the boat and everyone on it was accelerated through the spirit realm. If he stepped in it and was there, then he didn't move at all in the natural realm. He was taken through the spirit realm and instantly because that's how it happens. There's no time or any space in the spirit realm. And it supersedes this natural realm that you're sitting on those cues right now. We're breathing the air that's in this earth right now. But you are a supernatural being. And that's how Christ lived on the earth. When he was a man. Now I know he was still the son of God. But he had to live on this earth as a man. Amen? And he, yet he operated in those supernatural things. He was, what he was doing was demonstrating that anyone who received him would have that same ability to do that. So you should be expecting, especially in traffic, or when you're traveling, you should make a declaration, I will be accelerated there immediately. You need to say those words, because if you don't ever step out and start saying them, it is not going to happen. And when, when he started telling me that I would begin to demonstrate and manifest, I really stepped up me saying those things. And I began to say, I'm going to be just like you. I want to be just like you. I'm going to look like you, sound like you. And I would say it to the Father, I want to carry your image, demonstrate your image. I want to operate just like you. I want to be just like you. Don't you know that made them happy? 
They were delighted that someone on the earth was not satisfied being normal. <laughs> from himself and life itself rides on that bow as it goes in and out, moves in and out of his very being. And it's amazing. It's one of my favorite things. So I, I began to tell him, I want people to see your, your rainbow moving in and out of me. I want to demonstrate and manifest. I want to look like you. You created me in your image. So I want people to see that image and then they will know that you are real. Well, the next place I went after began saying that, someone ran to my product's table and leaned over and said, they said, did you know that you had a rainbow coming out of your head? So, I mean, no, I mean, no, this is the first, I mean, really, it was a real rainbow. And it was like moving in and out of your head, he was demonstrating. <laughs> And I looked at him and I said, well, I expected it because I am made in his image. I am made in my Father's image. I am made, made in the Lord's image. I am made in the Holy Spirit's image, which means that I have unlimited, he has unlimited layers of himself, by the way. Did you know that? Who didn't know that? Let me see your hands. Holy Spirit has unlimited layers of himself. And when he takes a layer of himself and sends it somewhere, it is a whole of him, not a piece of him. So when you invite the Holy Spirit to indwell you, you don't get a little piece of him. He'll take a layer of himself and put it in you. And you become the temple of the Holy Spirit because you have a whole of him living in you. So wherever he sends that, he knows everything going on in that place. All at the same time. Because he's God. Amen? One of the other images of the Holy Spirit is there's a whirlwind all the time. He has a whirlwind going around him. Expect the whirlwind to begin to come around you and out from you. I was standing at this products table and my son-in-law was doing the products for me. And um He's sort of like nonplussed most of the time. He's excited about everything that he's seen a lot and he understands a lot himself. So I'm at this products table and people begin to come up to me and I feel like a whirlwind coming out of me, like cosmic shock waves. And I thought it was coming from someone else near me. Isn't that funny? <clears throat> I'm at the products table, people come up and I'm like, wow, that person's got a strong anointing. Because I thought that was coming from them. And the Holy Spirit began to laugh at me. And he goes, that's coming from you. And he said, and I'm, so I said to the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? He said, just start walking down the line. Just walk straight forward. And everyone who walked past, I would feel these waves hitting them. They were going, shh, 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 shh. And I said, what is that? And he said, it's the glory. And they would not even get close to somebody. They would go, wham. So I'm walking down this Broke people who just came to buy products, right? And they're like getting all knocked out. And I'm just walking, you know, I'm getting kind of myself just from, just from that coming from me. But these people, these waves would hit them and they would go wham, 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 wham. <laughs> I went, this is pretty wild. He said, this is what happens when you carry the glory and you give us permission to use you. Amen? Because we hear all the time about the, the glory of God covering the earth like the waters cover the sea. By the way, that's us taking it there. 
it will cover the whole earth. And so that was something else. <clears throat> so the rainbow is coming out of my head, and here comes these glory rings coming around me, coming out and hitting people. I'm like, this is, this is, he said, this is what a normal life is going to be like one day. And you have to try really hard. He's not just talking about me, he's talking about the body of Christ. They will have to try really hard to remember what normal was. So expect to not be normal. Say, I, I do not want to be normal. Not well, I had already accepted that fact, <laughs> that it wasn't normal. But, but what he does with me is what he wants to do with the body of Christ. He told me a long time ago, you're going to be a living example of what we want to do with everyone. So get ready to get pink hair. I'm kidding. <clears throat> This reflects heaven, because color is everywhere in heaven. People turn different colors sometimes, their clothing turns color, their mansions change color. God created color. And if, and if he said, let us make man in our image, he wasn't saying, just let's, let's, let's make cat in our image. He said, let us make Man, that means male and female, in our image. And, and they will have our likeness. Their likeness is how they operate. Now that should be even more shocking to you that not only did they want us to carry their image, but also operate just like them. And the manifested sons and daughters are those who will say yes. You know, you, many are called, but few are chosen. And the only way he can choose you is if you say yes to being chosen. That's a revelation. People go, well, why are a few chosen? Because only a few said yes. Amen? So when you begin to have a desire to be like him and act like him, and you start saying it, that's when it happens. It's not like you're waiting for another 10 years to come and go. It's not like you have to go take some special class. It's not that you have to reach a certain age. It's all about the hunger you have in you to be like them. So you don't have to read an encyclopedia to figure it out. I have a 12th grade education. And this is who he picked to begin to demonstrate these powerful things from heaven. So you don't have to, you know, it's nice to have a college education. I'm not saying you don't get one, but I'm saying you don't have to wait till then. Right. And even children are having these experiences happening to them. More and more children are being caught up to heaven and shown heaven because they don't argue with their mind. If you want to know what hinders and delays is you arguing with your own mind. Because it doesn't make sense. And I've known God long enough to understand that it's almost never going to agree with your natural mind. Amen? And people go, God is so mysterious. He's mysterious and strange and wonderful and amazing. And he's not a man. He thinks way beyond that. He's not in a box. He doesn't have a box. There is no box that can hold him. He can hold the whole cosmos in one hand. Everything that was ever, ever, ever made, he can hold that in his hand. So what would hold him back? What would keep him from doing something? We need to think the same way. Not because we are so special, but we are, we are come to special by God. So special that he sent his only son to die. And by the way, his son is the only way to heaven. You don't get a special permission slip, a good behavior slip. You don't get one of those to go to heaven. It's the blood. Everybody say, it's the blood. There's no one else that gives me entrance into heaven. Yeah. 
It's only his blood. And do you know why? Because there is no one else in all existence that drank that cup. That's left a lot, left out a lot in this conversation about Jesus Christ. You know, he was holy, lived holy, but there is something that he did that no one else could possibly ever do or has ever done. That's why he is the only one that can forgive sins. Because he is the only one that bore them in his body on the cross. He didn't die on the cross just to have his body put there. He died to put sin, sickness, disease, hate, defilement. He went to the cross to put that stuff on the cross. But it had to be carried there. It had to be in somebody. Somebody who was willing to give their whole self who didn't have to. He didn't have to do it. But because of his love. And surrender. Say surrender. Even Jesus had to surrender. He had to surrender his own will. So what is the big deal that God asked you to give yours up? Well, we have our will. Yes, lay it down. That is the best place for your will and your flesh to be is laid down. Because your flesh will get in the way more than Satan will. Say amen. Your flesh needs to die. Your flesh isn't this. It's the you, that natural man inside of you that wants their way, their rights, their opinions, regardless if it crushes, hurts, or, or, or wipes out people. In other words, they want their flesh to rule. But when he said we are rule and reign with Christ, he was not talking about your flesh. That will hold you up, delay you, and keep you down. That flesh needs to die, and even though people want to leave parts of the Bible out and they retranslate them, that's not a good idea. That is not likely to happen. Well, I don't think people did this one right. I don't think this sounds right, or I just don't understand it. So I'm going to write a different version of the Bible. We'll just leave that out. I would never do that. Because <laughs> he has a reason and a purpose for all the things that have happened and will happen that he needs done, whether we understand or not. But your flesh gets in the way in your own life, in your family's life, where you work, even what your destiny is, because you want to figure it out yourself, and if it doesn't look like the way you thought it would be, you don't think it's God. Say amen. amen. That's why he said, take up your cross daily. He wasn't saying, not saying you had to go find a cross to die on. That cross is free to crucify your own flesh. People don't like to hear that. They want to have a happy time all the time. They want it their way all the time. You can find out those people, all they ever say is I. I, 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 but I, no, I don't like that. No, I don't want it that way. No, I don't believe that. No, we're going to do it this way. Nope, this is the best. No, nope, my idea is the best. You can't say that to God. <laughs> he already had a plan for you. He sent you from himself at the time he needed you here. When he sent you, he already had a destiny for you. That, that's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom. That's his plan. The kingdom is his plan. And stop saying, I want God's will. Unless you're willing to say, and I want his way. What you need to say is, I want his will, his way. And I have had to give that to him for years. And I would do it because I wanted to obey him. And if I didn't do it, then he would just, everything would just kind of sit there waiting for me to do it. Like clean up your closet. Seriously, my closet. And I was traveling, I was home one and a half days a week. And I went, oh, well, I'm sure that's going to be okay. It was not okay. That he had asked me to clean up my closet, and I had not done it. 
All kinds of things started happening like in reverse. And finally, finally, don't wait so long to ask him, what is it? And his answer to me was, clean up your closet. <laughs> so guess what I did? I spent hours cleaning out my closet. <laughs> And he wasn't doing that because he didn't like my closet. He was doing that to teach me to hear him and then obey him. Amen. He said, one day it will save your life. Amen. So you wonder why some people die and go home early? Somebody didn't hear or somebody just didn't do. Not all of the time, but sometimes that is the reason. So if you know he said to do something, do it. The people are, why are you talking about all this stuff? Because it's the necessary stuff. You want the big high things up here, but if you can't do what he's asking you to do down here, this seems insignificant. You are not going to listen to him when you get up here. Yes. Yes. And up here, if you make one thing wrong, you could die. Yes. And there's reasons for that. Not that he's going to kill you. It's just that you will want to take over something yourself when you're way up here doing stuff. And then you'll be a big target for the enemy. Yes. Amen? Yes. This is a powerful thing to be trusted by God with something so amazing that the measure he starts you with, no matter what that measure is about, whether it's faith or wealth or healing abilities, it doesn't matter what that is. You get a measure. As you grow in him, the measure increases. The more you give yourself to him all the time, the measure gets bigger. He can't give you great power if you can't handle what he gave you down here, right? If you can't, if you can't listen, if you can't do it, no matter how small it is, then he knows when you get up here, it would be dangerous for you. But if you have followed him every step, even if you fall down, get up and keep going. If you have continually followed him and obeyed him, you will get to do greater, bigger, stronger things. And you will have more than you ever did before because he knows it won't ruin you. Amen? It's because he wants you to be great. And so this sounds powerful, all these things he does with me, but trust me, I, I had to give up my life. That doesn't mean I don't have fun. I mean, how fun is it to wear really cool clothes, walk around with pink hair, and even the world likes me. Now, not so much some of the body. You know, they're afraid. They think I'm a false something or other, but they don't even know what to call me that because they don't even have a normal title. I can't really call her false. I don't know what a revelator is, so I don't even know if she's been a false one or not. So I don't know how to come against her. Because God was smart when he said you're going to look different, act different, and live different. So I'm giving you a different title. And people won't know how to, they won't know what to do. Some people don't care because it sounds like God, looks like God, and it makes something possible for me to do too. It's not something I'm keeping for myself. You get to be strange too. That's what that means. Yeah. You open your neighbor's door one day to say something, and when they open it, you're like blue gemstone. Like your whole body. Glowing. Now, I just want to let you know that um, I didn't mean to park in your yard the other day, but you know, we had so many people come to this little place and park something, and they're like this. <laughs> they won't care how many times you park in their yard. <laughs> I'm telling you. The truth. I know it sounds funny, but that is truth. When you live in the supernatural life with the supernatural God and let him do whatever he wants and he can tweak you all along because he's going to do something greater with you and you say yes and then you actually do it, you can expect even greater. Amen? Amen? I guess this is a school of greatness today. <laughs> But when you want to be an air, if you were an airline pilot, I don't know, we have any airline pilots in training, anybody, okay? That's a hard job. You have to watch every gauge. You have to watch every single thing. You have to be focused all the time, not just on the, whatever you call those things in front of you, what do you call them? You know, on the dashboard of the plane. 
I'm not certainly training to be a pilot, but you have to watch all that stuff, plus listen to the airport you came from, plus listen to the airport you're going to, and the towers that are involved. You, you're like this all the time. Trying to stay focused on everything going on in the plane, around the plane, in the atmosphere, on the ground. You have to watch all of those things. Uh, so if you apply with Delta, you will not come in their office a week later and go, thank you for my pilot's license. I would not get on that plane with that person, would you? One week of training, no, no, no. <laughs> and heaven is the same way. They will make sure you get trained. Sometimes life experiences, sometimes it's one-on-one -on -one with God himself, sometimes it's the angels bringing you direction that you knew God was going to send to you, and he may choose to do that. It's just that you have to be willing to walk it out and live it. This is a lifestyle. It's not a one-day encounter with God. In this time, he wants you to have a lifestyle that will pass down through generations after you, and they'll go higher, do greater, and be greater, to the point where there'll be a generation that will be raised up that will only know the glory. And we, in this time, get to start that. So not only is he offering this stuff to you, you are a forerunner. If you're alive, you're stepping into the, this time of God and saying yes to him, you are a forerunner. You're already written in the forerunner, book of forerunners in heaven. So you're not normal already. You've already said yes, you already wrote it down. You should be, begin to expect to live without any sickness. There will be changes made throughout these generations of even how people minister because things are changing in that time. And there will come a time on this earth where there will be no sick believers. That, that will be something that will be at one time in your life will be something you will ever, ever, ever have to think about. Not ever. And the generation is coming up under you. It will become more and more apparent. They, they are living supernatural because their soul is prospering. One of the other major things that is about to happen is the body of Christ, their souls, will begin to prosper greatly. And that scripture that's one of the few promises that says you can have divine health is that scripture. My God desires above all things. Is this a, so do you think this is important to him? This soul thing, you think that's important to him? He needs your soul to prosper? Yes, because it's part of his plan for you to not ever be sick. That scripture says, My God desires above everything else in our life. Is that you prosper. And you live in health. But there is a requirement. Even as your soul prospers. And that has a lot to do with us. Are we going to help it prosper? By saying the right things. Doing the right things. Watching the right things. All of that will impact your soul. He says guard it. For out of it will flow the way you live your life. How important is it to make sure the right stuff goes in your soul? Because then it will prosper. When it begins to prosper, that means you will financially prosper. And you will begin to live in health. That means no sickness. That doesn't mean sick and healed, sick and healed, sick and healed. That means no sickness on the earth. Now the world, that's a different situation. <laughs> They'll probably need a lot of prayer. A lot of people, when they begin to see these signs and wonders being done by the body of Christ, knowing that it's Jesus who is doing this, they're going to want him. Amen? So he has a reason in this special, say special, time. Never been on the earth before. It hasn't. We have called it in ourselves. Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. I think that means we should be holy. Amen.
If he made us in his image, we should be holy. Holy isn't if you're wearing a, a, a certain color t-shirt or not one. That's not holy. Holy is what is in here. You don't tolerate evil. You don't participate with evil. You don't advertise evil. You crush it. Say, I, I don't, don't do demons. Do demons. I, torment I torment them. Now that is a huge difference than the way a lot of the body of Christ have been living. Right. It really is. So things are changing. We have to make powerful choices and not just for that day. <laughs> I despise evil. Really despise it. And I can see it which hurts them. I'll throw the fire at God on every time I go past one and they scream. Where the more you walk like Christ walked and you're free from all darkness, you begin to look like an inferno when you walk around on this earth. And when they see this fire coming, they will run before you get there. This is how we're supposed to be. Remember those demons that said to Christ, have you come to torment us before our time? He never answered that question because it wasn't his, it was ours.